Hey guys, it's Bella, and these are my top 10 favorite books of 2021. So as you can tell, there are a lot of books missing from my shelf, and that's because we have a lot to talk about today. We have, obviously, my top 10 favorites, and then I have some honorable mentions, because the way that I decided I wanted to do this is that my top 10 are always going to be books that I read for the first time this year. But then I will do five honorable mentions for rereads, um, like my favorite rereads of the year, because it would be so much harder to include rereads in this list because obviously you reread the books you love like so much. And also, it, I feel like it's not really fair to let rereads in when there's probably going to be repeats for rereads multiple years, and I plan on doing one of these videos every year. So let's just get into the list. 2021 definitely had some really, really good books this year. Coming in at number 10 is the one and only Song of Achilles. Now, I kind of jumped on the train late obviously uh i just read it like september of this year so it wasn't even early in the year but i absolutely loved song of achilles song of achilles is as the title would suggest a retelling about achilles and patroclus and the trojan war and it puts a bit of a a spin on things um and I just found it so fascinating because I love mythology. I love mythology retellings and watch people take the classic stories that we all know so well and um, interpret them their own way. And the writing in this book was very beautiful. There were so many good lines and it was just, it was so good. The romance was so good. The story was really good and the characters were so complex and interesting. Both Achilles and Patroclus had their own faults and flaws that kind of led to the tragic ending of this book. For those of you who are wondering, yes, I did cry. Um, by the end, I was kind of a mess. Um, so if you are looking for a book that will definitely make you cry, um, and make you feel things and if you're a mythology nerd like me then definitely pick up the song of achilles coming in at number nine is better together by christine riccio who is also a booktuber better together is her second book and i absolutely love the first book but the second book really blew me away on a whole nother level so better together is a mix of sort of a Freaky Friday um, Parent Trap-esque book. Um, it is a contemporary but it does have some magic in there as you would think based on the description and it's basically about two long-lost sisters getting to know each other and trying to sort up sort out their really messed up family life while also having some romantic connections with other people. Of course, the concept sounds really cool and it absolutely does not disappoint. Like, I was laughing, crying, like, it was, it was so bad because I read this on an airplane, like, basically almost the whole thing on an airplane and, um, by the end of it I was crying and I was on this airplane just, like, sobbing because of this book, so, yeah, maybe it's telling that two of these books on the list already are books that made me cry. Um, I love books that make me cry because books that make me feel things and books that I can relate to and connect to are my absolute favorite types, which is most of the books on this list. I'm not gonna really have like any classics or like high literature books or whatever on this list just because I don't connect to those books as much. While I appreciate them for what they are, like great works of literature, um, they personally don't give me the kind of reading experience that will be memorable for me. But anyways, 
Butter Together was amazing. If you like Christine Riccio, if you um, like contemporary books um, of any sort, definitely check out Better Together. Like the family relationships, the romantic relationships, all of it were so strong in this book and I think she just has improved so much with her writing. Even though I still love the first book, I could definitely see the improvement with this book. All right, number eight is The Queen of Nothing by Holly Black. The Queen of Nothing is the third book in the Cruel Prince trilogy, which I did read very recently. I started The Cruel Prince in November and I finished the trilogy in December. And oh my god, when I tell you that these books are fantastic, like I had my doubts going in. Um, based on some things I heard online, I was a little unsure, but these books were amazing. Everything about them. The plot, like the plot twists were so good. The romance was very, very well built up and was satisfying in the end. All of the different characters, none of them were perfect. Like none of them were the traditional hero or like the main, the traditional like main character. Um, Jude definitely had a lot of flaws and so did every other character but that's what made me love this book even more is because all of these characters were so relatable in the ways that they acted, the ways that their actions affected others and some of them were just kind of stumbling through life trying to figure out who they were and that was so relatable um, especially for fantasy books where like sometimes because of the big complicated plots it can the relatability can get a little lost um i think that was a very strong factor for this book that i really didn't see coming and of course i, I love the romance so much in these books like i just want more of it anyways i've been talking about this book for a while let's get on to the other books okay so coming in at number seven i actually don't have the physical copy but that is One Last Stop. If you don't know, One Last Stop was written by Casey McQuinston, who is the person who wrote Red, White, and Royal Blue. It's a very popular book, but she actually released One Last Stop, I believe, earlier this year. I think it was like March, something like that. It was earlier this year, I'm pretty sure. Um, it might have been during the summer. I don't really remember because I didn't read it um, when it first came out. But when I did read it, oh my god, I quickly fell in love with it. Um, I still prefer Red, White, and Royal Blue. That book has a really special place in my heart that I don't think can ever be overtopped by any other contemporary book. But One Last Stop was a very close second. Um, the concept of One Last Stop is actually very, very interesting. Um, it is about a girl who's very cynical and moves to New York because, you know, New York's like the city of cynicism. It's a perfect place for her. And she meets some new friends and she meets a girl on the subway, slowly starts to build relationships there, which wasn't supposed to happen. That girl on the subway, though, there is a twist. Um, and I personally did not know this twist going into the book and I think it made the book a lot better. But in the synopsis, it actually, like, reveals the twist, which was kind of weird to me. But I'm not going to reveal the twist here because of that reason. But she has to figure out what is trapping this girl on the subway and figure out how to undo it. So yeah, this book was fantastic. I loved the romance. I loved all the side characters. Like, the side characters had my heart. I loved them. I loved the main character. Um... She was just so conflicting and I loved that. She wasn't ever one thing or one stereotype. She was always so many different things and there was really no like bi stereotypes because a lot of times when you read bi characters they're always like super like promiscuous or like you know they date a lot of people or like they're you know they're very I don't know I don't know how to describe it but you know those bi stereotypes that you read a lot and while dating a lot of people or like being super promiscuous isn't a bad thing in the least, like it's not bad at all. Framing all bi characters as being like that is bad because um, we 
I've, we already have a bad enough stereotype as it is it's not being like trustworthy and stuff so I just found it really refreshing to read a very like timid but confident in some ways like kind of emotionally closed off but also like energetic by character um I loved it and reading about like there's so much so much LGBT LGBT history in this book I loved reading about it like it brought me to tears at certain points because of just how like rich this book was in um like LGBT history that I never knew about or only knew about some parts and I think it did a really good job of educating people about what it was really like to be LGBT like back in the 70s and how much it's changed but it still can be a struggle a lot of the times. So yeah, if you liked Red, White, and Royal Blue, if you like reading about LGBT characters, if you like contemporaries, um, anything like that, definitely, definitely check it out. Coming in at number six is this massive book that is known as A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J. Mass. Now, I prefer her other books to the Akatar series. Um, I definitely think Throne of Glass and Crescent City, at least in my mind, are better. There are a lot of elements in the Akatar series that rubs me the wrong way sometimes. And you know, no series is perfect by a long shot. Um, I just definitely think that her writing, her characters, um, her diversity, everything has improved tremendously since the Akatar series was originally <laughs> released um and I mean that goes for Throne of Glass too like her writing and diversity has definitely improved since the beginning of Throne of, Throne of Glass but overall I just prefer the story of Throne of Glass and everything else in Crescent City to Akatar but when this book came out um I I absolutely loved it like it was such a powerful experience and like when you think about reading high fantasy with um you know all of the traditional like Sarah J Maas kind of things um you don't really imagine like what you actually get in this book which is a lot a lot of character growth a lot of mental health like talking about mental health um talking about so many important issues that um really need to be addressed more in fantasy like despite all of her flaws Sarah J Maas really really addresses a lot of important things that aren't normally discussed in fantasy such as periods such as mental health such as training such as um you know all of those like kind of nitty-gritty stuff that's often like just brushed under the rug because you know you need time for all this big plot stuff um, and this book, this book, as you can clearly tell, it takes its time. It takes its time. It unapologetically gives us all of the nitty gritty stuff. And I loved that. I much preferred reading the nitty gritty stuff rather than the action or, um, you know, the big plot points. Like, I actually really preferred, um reading like the day-to-day -day life and that's kind of something that a lot of readers might disagree on when it comes to any book is a lot of people are like action or romance or that kind of stuff and um I love both those things mostly romance over action but <laughs> I love both those things but I'm a very character driven person when it comes to reading as long as a character that I love is being fleshed out explored um and you know you get to see a lot of them then I don't really care what the plot's going on like I don't really care if the plot's bad but the characters are phenomenal I'll read the book that's just a me thing the writing's bad the characters are phenomenal I'll read the book again just a me thing that's one of the reasons why I like Sarah J Maas books so much um and why I prefer Throne of Glass and Crescent City is because she really does write very good characters that grow a lot over time and uh that's why act hard for me it's lower because I just don't connect with the characters as much uh, I think there's a lot of characters in that series that are just not as likable to me um or don't grow as much um 
again just my opinion i'm not bashing anyone who likes it um like if you like it great i'm really glad but i definitely think her writing her character development everything improved so much in this book the main character nesta is because this is a spin-off i didn't explain this but this is a spin-off to the original act horror series which is like a high fantasy with fey and magic and stuff but this is a spin-off about the main character feyre's sister nesta and nesta kind of a messed up person she's had a lot of bad things um you know so have a lot of characters in the series but she's not hasn't been the greatest person to her friends and family and she's in a really really low spot she's dealing with a lot of trauma and she's just generally really struggling and this book is about her going from that position and bringing herself up and growing as a person and i love that because i love reading about morally great characters and how despite how flawed they are they still manage to bring themselves up and um fight for what they really care about because that's what makes a character for me even if they do horrible things as long as they fight for what they care about the character is always going to be intriguing and interesting and i just i love that trope so much and while nesta isn't exactly like a morally great character she definitely starts out that way um again she does some pretty messed up things to her friends and family but yeah if you like high fantasy sarah jimmas books uh, if you like any of that stuff i would definitely check it out all right coming in at fifth is kindred i also don't have the physical copy for kindred i read it as an audiobook um but kindred is by octavia e butler and i read a lot of her books this year and kindred was my favorite by far kindred is about a black woman who travels back in time to the plantation south um because she has to save her ancestor and like save herself basically because if he dies her whole family line dies and it's such an interesting book um that really delves into a lot of things that makes you think and it was so dark so heavy but so well written so the issues in it were so well explored i would just recommend octavia e butler as an author period because the majority of her books i that i've read so far i really did enjoy except for fledgling but uh if you want to know more about that either check out the review that's on my goodreads or instagram or watch my reading wrap-up videos because fledgling was a time that i didn't enjoy but the rest of her books are phenomenal so i would definitely definitely recommend kindred now we're getting to what i would consider like the four most phenomenal books of this year like i really had trouble ranking these four i had trouble ranking all of them but these four man i just love all of them and ranking it was hard <laughs> coming in at fourth place is rule of wolves by lee bardugo god i just love this book and like look how stunning this book is it's like one of my most stunning books ever rule of wolves is the second book in the king of scars duology and the King of Scars duology is part of the Grishaverse books, which is an entire universe of books that are written by Lee Bardugo. And they started with the Shadow and Bone trilogy, which is pretty good in my opinion. I would check it out. Then there was the Six of Crows duology, which is a phenomenal, I can't speak, phenomenal, amazing, A+, plus, A+, plus, some of my favorite books ever. Check them out. <laughs> check them out. Just do it like if you like fantasy or if you like any genre just just check out six of crows please um and then she wrote uh king of scars um which i thought was pretty good too um i definitely liked it i love way we bardugo's writing and then she wrote the sequel rule of wolves this book guys oh my god it is up there with six of crows and crooked kingdom it's probably like my third favorite grisha verse book which is saying something because six of crows and crooked kingdom are like some of my favorite books of all time um 
but I literally have tear stains like on these pages like I am gonna tear up just thinking about it like this book destroyed me um it was sad it was real sad and I love I love me a good sad book but it also it visited some of our favorite characters I'm not gonna spoil it but we got some real good stuff in there that we haven't gotten to see since Crooked Kingdom um we finished out some amazing character arcs uh we got introduced to a trans character I'm not gonna say who but it was a good it was a well-written well-represented trans character in a fantasy book do you want to know how many times I've seen that done one time that book like amazing um I know I shouldn't be like this excited over like one little scrap of representation that we got but I'm excited um and it just it just meant a lot to read about and that's just check out just check out this, just read read Libra Duga's books there's only one book of hers that I have not read yet and it's Ninth House and I'm planning on reading it January probably yeah just check out Libra Duga's books they're fantastic I love the characters I love the plot I love everything loved everything okay we're in the top three guys <laughs> we're in the top three this this third book I mean the, the third place you get it um it's actually it's a change of genre I know it's crazy like all of these except for like two maybe three 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 all of these except for three have been fantasy so I apologize for that I really tried I really tried this year to expand what I read and I think I did but I'm just gonna keep trying every year to expand it more because um, I read a lot of fantasy. I'm unapologetic about it, but it, it's it's kind of bad. It, it's kind of an obsession. But yeah, this book is not fantasy. In fact, it is my one and only sci-fi on the list, and that is Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. My love, I I love this book with my whole heart with my entire heart like you you don't even know I can't even say heart correctly because of how much I love this book so Project Hail Mary is written by Andy Weir as I said who wrote The Martian and The Martian is a very popular uh sci-fi book it had a movie made about it if you don't know about it it's basically about a guy who was stranded on Mars and he has to survive there were potatoes many many potatoes involved and I love The Martian. It's definitely one of my favorite books of all time. It's definitely my favorite. Well, actually, not now, but it was my favorite sci-fi book. So I was very excited for Project Hail Mary. Then one of my friends kept telling me, you must read Project Hail Mary. Like, Project Hail Mary's so good. Like, it's so good. And I was like, okay, I'll read it. I'll read it. I'll read it. And I eventually did read it. And it was amazing. It was amazing. It was so, so good. Andy Weir did such a good job with this book. Basically, the premise is about a guy who doesn't have any of his memories. He just wakes up on a space station and a spaceship, space station, same thing. Um, all the sci-fi fans are just gonna like come for me now. But he wakes up, doesn't have any memories, and he's trying to figure out what he has to do there. Apparently, what he has to do there is save Earth. Throughout the book, we figure out, or we get told what happened on earth what's going on where he is now who he is we slowly learn more and more as his memories come back and it's such a phenomenal way to tell the story there's also a amazing character that comes in in the second act of the book and i love him with my entire life telling you about him would be a spoiler so i'm not going to but there, for those of you who have read it you know who I'm talking about he starts his name starts with an R he's precious I love him he is everything and this book we have another instance of a very very flawed main character and I love that we learn that everything's not as it seems with him and as he figures out more about himself he figures out what he wish he would have done differently I loved Project Hail Mary the writing oh my god I this is just like when I tell you that I rank these based on like reading experience what I mean by that is just every second of this book like gripped my entire soul and was like 
keep reading this book keep reading this book like i read this book on vacation and it was so hard for me to get up and actually do things even fun things after reading this book because i just wanted to talk about this book think about this book read it more it, it was an experience just read it just read it final two so we're back to fantasy <laughs> I don't think anyone who's been on this channel for very long is surprised, but my second to last favorite book is Chain of Iron by Cassandra Clare. For those of you who don't know, I'm a huge Cassandra Clare fan, a huge Shadowhunters fan. Well, actually, maybe you should know. They're literally all right here. All of them are right here. <laughs> yeah, I love her books. I love her writing style. It's I love her characters. I physically cannot tell you how much I love Shadowhunters. I read Chain of Iron during my Shadowhunters reread that earlier this year. Um, I vlogged some of that reread, which I will put a little card up on the screen. I feel like it's on this side. Or this side? I'm not- I can't remember. Um, and I'll link down in the description. I'll also link all my, like, reading wrap-ups and everything because I've talked about some of these books, um, in those reading wrap-ups given some more detailed reviews and stuff but anyway chain of iron was amazing honestly in terms of reading experience i'm not sure if it gripped me quite as much as project Hail mary but before y'all come for me the reason why i ranked it higher is because the characters i would die for the they're so good the emotions that this book brought from me were so strong the frustration the terror the the despair everything in this book the emotions were so strong and that is what i love in books that is what makes me love shadow hunters because despite it being a fantasy series at its core emotions and relationships are what it's about and i think that's how it should be for most books because that's what humans are at their core emotions relationships family and friends and everything um, we love reading about that stuff and Chain of Iron that's really what it is about like the plot I don't really remember that much in this book and this is what I mean the plot wasn't bad like it was good it was fine um but the characters were what took the forefront that's why I loved it so much because I could sit down and read an a thousand page book just purely about characters I don't it doesn't need to have a plot it just could just be about the characters and I'd love it so yeah if you're a Shadowhunters fan, just read Chain of Iron. I didn't really explain much of the context with Chain of Iron just because it is part of a huge, huge, huge series. I wouldn't really be able to explain without spoiling and stuff, so yeah. Just, just go read it. <laughs> Alright, before we get to number one, I'm going to share with you my... Uh, rereads, my favorite rereads of this year. I'm gonna go through these kind of quickly since they are just honorable mentions. My fifth place honorable mention is Lord of Shadows by Cassandra Clare. This is the second book in the um, Dark Artifices trilogy. Again, more Shadowhunters books. Um, I love it mainly because of the characters. I will link the video uh, where I actually vlogged myself rereading this book. It does have tears quite a few tears in this book so have fun with that <laughs> the next one was harry potter and the half-blood prince this is i think my favorite harry potter book it's hard for me to say that it's either this one or the deathly hollows but i'm pretty sure it's this one and that's why i'm putting it on the list <laughs> you literally cannot see me <laughs> yes the throne of glass series i think my favorite book is kingdom of ash but I also really love uh, Queen of Shadows, Empire of Storms, Tower of Dawn, basically all of the like later books in the series because that's where her writing starts to get like really phenomenal. But again, I was just too lazy to pry them out from this. <laughs> I am a big Throne of Glass fan. It's really helped me through a lot of hard periods in my life. I wouldn't really be where I am now without them and I just, I just love all of the characters in this series so much. I love the plot so much. I am just such a big sucker for Throne of Glass. Second to last is previously mentioned Red, White, and Royal Blue. 
I did a reread with the audiobook and the audiobook's fantastic by the way. This is one of my favorite books of all time. Read it. Last but not least of my favorite rereads is Crooked Kingdom. See basically Crooked Kingdom and Red, Red and Royal Blue are tied but the thing is it's basically they're so different um in terms of the genre is really what sets them apart and since I'm a fantasy sucker I feel like I had to put the fantasy above like the contemporary romance so I'm sorry Red Ryan Royal Blue I'm sorry I'm sorry um also your title is just so long how can I say it <laughs> the honorable mentions out of the way and this video is like gonna be an hour long um so sorry about that <laughs> I have my favorite book of the year drumroll please everyone Crescent City by Sarah J Maas. So I read Crescent City in January, which is kind of depressing to think that my favorite book of the year was like one of the first books I read. And honestly, rereading it, I can't say with 100% confidence that I might agree with myself. But from all my memories, from all of the stuff that I've talked about it, how all of the stuff that I've revisited in it since January has convinced me to put it at my number one spot. Because Crescent City is without a doubt the most phenomenal Sarah J Maas book I've ever read. It has some of my most favorite characters ever. It is gripping, it is emotional, it is gut-wrenching. The plot twists are there. Everything is there from the first page. In the in the um what's it called the synopsis there is a what I would consider a pretty huge spoiler for something that happens yes relatively early in the book but still um it's so much more gut-wrenching when you don't know about it because the whole time I was thinking oh well is this when it's gonna happen or this is when it's gonna happen but even even though I knew about it I still didn't believe it when it was there on page um it was about to make me cry like 30 pages in um and Bryce my love I love her so much she's the main character in Crescent City and oh my god I adore this character so much she's so good so good um so Crescent City because let me do a synopsis and not get uh that far ahead of myself here is a sort of like it's an urban fantasy but it has like high fantasy elements it's kind of a mixture of both which is really interesting another part of why i really like it but i'll get to that so it's a high like urban high fantasy um and it has this girl named bryce she's half fae um so she has those pointy ears that we all love and uh she has to solve a murder and she has to solve it with someone she doesn't like very much but they have to work together to solve it she ends up bonding with him a lot and she ends up uncovering a lot of things um about her city um her friends her family along the way that are uh, either really good or not so good and she also discovers a lot of things about herself Sarah J Maas man she is a master of action like I am not a very action-oriented person, I'm a character-oriented person, but I would read any action that she gave me because it's always so gripping and it's always mixed with just the right amount of emotion and character growth that it it, it makes you want to read it because it's about like the character growing and the culmination, the satisfying culmination of all of their character growth um, kind of poured into this final battle or this action or whatever i mean that's kind of what fantasy is all about isn't it it's taking these core human emotions and expressing them through magic or fighting or whatever and i that's what i love about fantasy and it teaches you all of these important lessons about life in ways you'd never expect but yeah uh the world building man crescent city has some of the best world building like this is a long book mind you it's like I forget how long it is. It's like either 600 or 800 pages. I'm checking right now. It's almost 800 pages. But still, usually with world building, you don't get to this level of detail until like book three of a series. You know, like with Throne of Glass, like her other series, 
we didn't really get into like a huge amount of world building until book three, book four, but Crescent City, it sets it up so well and it does it in a way that's interesting too. And as much as people complain that this book shoves it all in its beginning, I would disagree. It sprinkles it in pretty well throughout the whole thing. The only stuff that it really like shoves into the beginning are like stuff that's absolutely necessary to understand the full intensity of the plot twist that happens. Speaking of plot twists, oh my god, the final act of this book was just like plot twist after plot twist after plot twist and none of them were like for shock value. Like of course they made me shocked but they all tied into the main story very well. They all had been led up to the whole time and the final scene, oh my god, talking about this is reminding me why I put this in first place because the final scene was so good. So I'm planning on rereading this book um, in January because the sequel comes out in February. I'm pretty sure it's February, which I'm beyond excited for. But um, so I'm planning on rereading it in January. And I am definitely going to do a book, book talk about this because the amount that I just want to talk about, like the details of this book, but one, I haven't read it since January. So like, I can't fully remember everything. And two, I don't want to spoil this for anyone, like at all. I do not want to spoil it. So please just read Crescent City, like just read Crescent City and then you can tune into my book talk in January and um, kind of talk about your thoughts with me. Those were all of my favorite books. This video has been many things. It's been chaotic. It's been a little messy. Um, it's been long, but I hope you enjoyed it and I really, really enjoyed filming it. I honestly love filming these videos where I can just sit down and talk about my love of books because that's what I really started this channel for. But I still have to film my December reading wrap up so, and edit my final anorimo writing video, which I'm so sorry. Like, I'm gonna say it there, but I will say it here. I am so, so sorry. You all have seen it already. Like, you better have seen it already before this because I'm planning on posting it today. But, um,. <laughs> I'm so sorry for, for making you guys wait like a month after I actually filmed the video. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know what your favorite reads for 2021 were. Let me know what you want to read next year and what you're most excited to read next year. If you like this kind of content, make sure to like, subscribe, and turn on those post notifications.